what we're doing today is uh, we got some raw logs in from our tree service uh, business and this is a black cherry log and part of what we need to do when we receive a log from our tree service is just make some decisions about uh, preparing it for storage and preparing it to hit the mill. Um, what Casey, Bill and I are doing this morning is we're taking this log, we're, we're pulling some measurements and we're trying to determine uh, what kind of final slab that we would like to get out of this thing. So we're kind of like uh, beginning with the end in mind and prepping the log so that we can get there. What we're going to do, just for this log for instance, we have, uh, we have the cut that's left over from when they removed the tree. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get a nice square cut on the end of this log measure back <clears throat> to where in this log there's a pretty good crook in this log so what we want to do is try to isolate two straight sections and, and we measured out and we found like a usable length of wood we're going to square cut it off there remove a short section in the middle and then get back another uh, 10 foot log out of this We have our, our logs cut down to length, and one thing we can do when a log comes in green like this is we use a product like Anchor Seal. It's a it's like a wax emulsion that we can paint on the butts of these logs, and the reason we do that is these things will, are going to dry really rapidly and unevenly here in the beginning. Uh, there's going to be a lot of moisture that gets lost out of the ends, and that, that causes stress on the log, and it'll lead to defects such as like end checking and and those sorts of things that we want to try to avoid throughout the process. So this is just one way that we can protect our log against rapid moisture loss and cut down on some of those defects. We just want to paint the entire butt of the log with this anchor seal. This one has some rot in the base of it. So, you know, we're obviously going to not get good contact there, but uh, we want to paint it from uh, edge to edge across the entire surface. We have a big lead from the same black cherry tree that we were working with and uh, this one's unique because there's actually a pretty large crotch here where these two leads split off from one another and typically within this crotch area is some really interesting figure it's really desirable for slabs so when we're looking at this log and prepping it to store and prepping it for the mill we're going to want to go ahead and preserve this crotch and so what we're going to do this is quite a crook uh, on this lead that's coming off and we're just going to trim it down cut it to length and paint the ends just like we did the other we're making a selection about where to cut this log and one feature that's down here that's actually interesting is there's a bulge down here and that's a sign on the outside of the tree which is normally considered a defect in like grade lumber but for slabs that's like a that's a sign that there's a included knot or something in there that actually provides a lot of interesting figure for the wood so we're going to include that bulge that's right here 
in in our choice for what to save and we're probably going to cut this thing off the last few feet where it sweeps up just because there's a lot of stress in that wood when we dry it we're probably going to see it degrade and deform quite a bit so we just want to save our very best straightest part of this plank that contains the most figures so that's why we're going to cut this off here too With our particular operation, uh, if a person really wanted to, they could try to work this piece down and do something with it. For us, we have to focus on the, the best quality slabs that we can produce. So a piece like this, because we have a fully integrated operation, we have uh, the opportunity to make wood chips or mulch out of this piece. Whereas there's another piece that was cut off the, the end of the log here. It's a four foot section, uh, you know, probably 20, 21 inches in diameter. Sometimes these remnant pieces are, are worthwhile because we can slab those out for end table pieces and other uh, desirable planks that people can work with. So I think the last important point is once we blocked our logs down, we painted the ends, uh, we want to store them in a way that keeps them off the ground, keeps moisture from wicking into them. Some species even stain pretty badly if they're in contact with the ground. So we just use whatever materials available. Railroad uh, ties are really nice to stack logs on. We can still get in here with a forklift and lift them up. You'll just see that there is some checking that is involved on this log and probably some wind shake, which is this concentric ring here. It's just a shattering of the trunk due to uh, wind damage while the tree was alive and then it's just a natural check here in the heart or the pith of the log the very center of it there but I think storing logs in this way gives them the best chance of being preserved until they can hit the mill so we're gonna try to get through these logs and, and mill them green if possible like in the next couple of weeks if they have to hang out here for a while that's okay too I just wanted to show also there's some logs that have been here for a while and these are white oak it's hard to tell because the bark's blown off, but these were painted at one time uh, prior to storage, but even uh, over time, the elements eventually act on these things. They start to degrade. These checks uh, really start to penetrate deep into the trunk. The check is a crack that you see here and uh, would cause problems during milling and, and ultimately in the slabs that we produce. Mm -hmm. 